Hello, my name is Jill Phillips and I'm absolutely delighted to be here with you today contributing to this important Birthing with Colour event. Um, I'm the creator of a tool called Who's Shoes and I'm going to tell you a bit about some of the work that we've been doing trying to get some of these important conversations going and getting some positive action happening as a result. So this presentation today can't be quite as interactive as I normally do. Um, I really like to get things off to a, a kind of inclusive, fun start and, and as part of our virtual Who Shoes we've been inviting people to colour in our welcome screen and also to help each other understand a bit more about Zoom and some of the functions and facilities that are available. So this screen was coloured in um, a week or so ago at a CoPro Live um, event that I ran for the launch of the UCL Co-Production Centre in London. So some incredible opportunities coming along at the moment with people really wanting to build co-production and get people talking to each other during this really difficult time during the pandemic. So if people have heard that you always get really nice cakes when you come along to a Who's Shoes event, well that's one of the things that I'm sorry we haven't managed to do as part of the virtual events but we've been really trying to make them engaging in other ways and hopefully you'll get a bit of a feel for what we've been doing. So Who's Shoes, um, I jumped ship from my day job 12 years ago to set up Who's Shoes and it's always aimed to be inclusive, to cover all sorts of different topics and to bring in people all ages, all backgrounds, all nationalities. The youngest person that we've ever had at one of our maternity events was a baby at the bottom um, bottom picture there, four days old, which was absolutely lovely in Manchester. And the oldest person that I'm aware of who's come to, our, to one of our events was uh, in the top picture, a 101 year old who came along to one of our dementia friendly community events in Kent. So I don't know if that qualifies for the Guinness Book of Records, but I like it. So I want to give a massive shout out to Anna and Carrie. You may have seen that we typically get um, a big event and conversations and lots of energy and one of our fantastic graphic recorders recording the conversations live in a really authentic way and leaving people with a lasting record that they can say, well, this is what our people said, this is what um, we need to continue working together to make happen. So throughout this presentation, you'll see quite a lot of images that either Anna or Carrie have very skillfully drawn for us. So I want to give also a shout out to Lewisham and Greenwich. It was when I saw that Helen Noah was behind this event today that I agreed to take part because Helen and her team in Lewisham and Greenwich have been real innovators with Who's Shoes, always um, trying to do something different and um, sort of breaking the boundaries in terms of innovation. So they've pushed me to work with them to come up with scenarios and poems around some really interesting and important topics. We've had events, I think they've had about 14 Who's Shoes events in total now in, in Lewisham or Greenwich. And we've had events such as um, looking at smoking in pregnancy. What are the real reasons? You know, don't just tell people to stop. Let's actually get in their shoes and find out what will help them. And similarly, um, we've done events around working with parents of children with Down syndrome. Um, we've done events just for student midwives just for dads, um, looking at gestational diabetes and what can help. So um, really delighted to be working with Helen again today. So, so this is my partner in crime, Fab Obs Flo. She's a consultant obstetrician at Kingston Hospital who's been incredibly forward thinking in terms of um, an obstetrician who's very, very patient-centred, woman-centred, looking at the experience of people and how it can be improved. And together, back in 2014, we co-founded MATX, which has been an extraordinary social movement for change. And um, one of the things that Flo's done, which I absolutely love, is founded the Lithotomy Challenge. 
and if you google that you'll find some really interesting pictures um, different teams around the country and I think it's a classic in terms of a medical procedure that probably needs to happen in certain circumstances but in the future will we look back and think really did you give birth in lithotomy position and just to get people thinking about how it feels and if it needs to be used then how can you make people feel as dignified and as cared for and as comfortable as they can be so one of the campaigns that I've really promoted um, has been language and this has been across the board not just in maternity asking people to think about the language that they use and how people receive it perceive it um, whether it's clear whether it's helpful and this was um, a few years back now a matex negativity bingo that i launched on twitter and literally filled in within a couple of hours of people making suggestions no censoring no filtering i just used the 16 squares and filled in the first things that people said and typically of whose shoes you probably wouldn't agree um, with all of the, the the words that are written here but it's a conversation starter and to make people think about how other people perceive language so for example big baby Flo published her most recent podcast last week exploring the big baby topic take a look failure to progress we've done lots of of work around failure it seems to be big in maternity care failure to di dilate failure to conceive, failed induction. So again, trying to make people think about language and perhaps have light bulb moments in terms of, oh, I didn't realize that when I said that, that that's how people felt. So language, big part of patient experience, but patient experience is intrinsically linked with patient safety. And um, again, some images from, from Anna here. So what is Who's Shoes? It's actually a board game and it's a tool that looks at issues from different people's perspectives and it gets people who wouldn't normally talk together talking about things together that really matter and as equals. No hierarchy, just people. So we try and cut across hierarchies, cut across silos. The people sitting in the um, picture there, which I think was, it, yeah, it was a young parents workshop in Birmingham they're not in NHS uniforms. You can't tell who are the professionals, who are the um, the women, the, the citizens joining us. All just having a conversation as equals where they can bring as much or as little of themselves personally or professionally as they feel comfortable into the conversations. So as I say, Flo and I co-founded Matex back in 2014. We have five pilot workshops across London of which Lewisham and Greenwich was, was one of them. And the material that we developed was used in all the listening events for the National Maternity Review and fed into the Better Births campaign. So here's a little taster of what a Who Shoes event is, is like. This is obviously filmed before the pandemic. Um, it really makes me smile when I see a team such as in this case the Quality First team from Princess Alexandra Hospital in Harlow put together their own little film and tweet it. But I love the tweet here. Today's Who's Shoes event was inspiring. Matt X, wearing other people's shoes can be uncomfortable, but it's essential to the delivery of truly outstanding maternity care. And we've got Shahid reading one of our poems here at the beginning. And I thought these shoes just don't suit me. Whose Shoes is a tool, possibly cool, simple yet challenging, relaxed and fun, gets people talking, gets things done, crucial conversations for change, real change, all welcome, all equal, people, not roles, real scenarios, set your own goals, light your own fires, locally, vocally, take ownership.
So I've already mentioned the um, an event we had in Birmingham. We've done three big maternity projects. The original maternity project back in 2014, and then a couple of years later, Nobody's Patient, which looks specifically at women and families who fall between various um, gaps in services. So for example, maternity and neonatal care. And then the most recent big project was perinatal mental health. We called it Mind and Body. So just to give you just a, a little kind of snippet, really, in terms of how we developed the resources, the top picture was a very big event um, held by the Perinatal Mental Health West Midlands Network. And we got 120 people crowdsourcing scenarios, looking at issues such as poverty, FGM, vulnerable women, crisis, birth trauma. From that, we developed the mind and body resources, which then started to be used at events. So this was an event in Birmingham where we used those scenarios. But I've also included a little video made by Kathleen, who runs wonderful parenting classes called Approachable Parenting. And she made this little video for us six months later as part of our Matex Advent series, where we crowdsource videos from um, 24 different people, pretty much. And she talks about one of the outcomes from that event, learning more about the infant voice and the importance of it. So I'm including that really as an example of the kind of ripples that keep going on with people making pledges or having light bulb moments during the events. We in our courses teach mums practical skills and tools to help them to form a secure attachment, to bond with their baby, and we teach them the importance of brain development. From the summer when we were actually on the Who's Shoes Day with Jill, we went back thinking about how can we change what we do, modify what we do to be better. And from that we have re-looked at our role plays and now we do it from the child's perspective. So the baby, the pregnant mum, the baby inside, we actually have the baby's voice when we do our role plays. Or after birth, we do it from the child's perspective, the child when they're born, the baby then, and do the role play, listen to the baby's voice. This is a very powerful way of getting the message across of the importance of secure attachment and bonding. So in terms of other ripples, we did, there's an extraordinary story about Matex the musical, how we managed to bring together 35 people onto the main stage of NHS Expo, the biggest NHS conference in the country. And um, they were the genuine people ranging from student midwife, obstetricians, GPs, midwives, um, a baroness, ja Jackie Dunkley Bent, Sarah Jane Marsh, the um, transformation lead, um, a dad, um, lots of, of parents, all sorts of people coming together um, to do this production around um, better births and what it means to, to women and families and staff and using Who Shoes scenarios and poems to present it. Um, as a massive story that I'm not going to, to talk about any more today. But again, I absolutely loved it when the song that we'd, we'd, um, we'd written for that, written with um, two fantastic music therapists at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital who do work around maternity care and children's care. At a workshop later at Surrey Heartlands, quite spontaneously we got singing the song and um, with Sarah, one of the mums, interpreting for us in Muckaton. So to have signing there, um, again, her daughter has got Down syndrome, whose shoes is about being inclusive to everybody. So this was Paulette Kerr from Surrey Heartlands leading our singing. Well 
So our challenge this summer has been how to keep the conversations going, how to take Who's Shoes online. And we started to see just how much good practice was spontaneously springing up across the country, whether led by the NHS or by communities. And we had a simple aim originally to, to do one online session um, around sharing best practice. A lot of Who's Shoes is about sharing best practice so that people don't have to reinvent the, the wheel. But of course, it wasn't as simple as that. Our first session was um, sharing be best practice, JFDI style, let's just do it. Let's connect people and let's um, help them do, do all these good things. But the, this program kind of naturally presents itself. It emerged very quickly that as we research more and obviously our own experience and talking to people, various groups emerged that we were thinking, well, what about them? You know, how does this pandemic affect different groups of people? And again, can we find best practice and can we share it? So we ended up with an incredibly intense program over the course of, of six weeks, one session per week, all brand new crowdsourced material looking at what about us people the second session was people who would normally access nhs services that weren't covid specific and then the third session which is the one that's that's most relevant to today um it was clear that black and ethnic minority communities are being disproportionately affected what can we do so that's the one i'm going to talk about a bit more now so welcome to Virtual Who's Shoes. This just gives you a tiny snippet of how we've taken the board game online. Um, that, that, that's what we've been doing in all sorts of, of different ways, but I want to tell you more about the, the kind of outcomes from it today. So a little video coming up, um, actually bringing the board game on screen, um, somebody lining up the little shoes, we had teams playing, we had breakout rooms, we had all sorts of different things. But in this tiny little example, we land on a blue card, which is typically from a person's point of view as opposed to a professional. Simply brilliant. I will always be grateful to Dr. Rachel Grimaldi, an NHS anaesthetist, who realized how difficult it was for staff to communicate with patients when wearing PPE an invented card medic, which gives clear information to all and translates into many languages. My mum does not speak good English, particularly when she's distressed or in pain, but her doctor helped her by using these simple digital flashcards to find out how to make her more comfortable. Now, that was an example of, of something that I thought was just fantastic during the pa pandemic. This was a need that was spotted and delivered really within about three weeks, I think, in terms of someone realising, Rachel realising, that something as simple as being able to display words and then translate them and then actually have an audio as well to people who were scared, um, healthcare professionals trying to communicate what was happening and and to, to, to ask the person, um, you know, for, for for what what they wanted to say, what their choice was, or whether they understood, and for people to be able to to have that message, regardless of who they were and what um, whether they could speak English and in a noisy environment. I think Rachel originally thought that this this must exist, but like so many simple ideas, it didn't. And one reason I particularly wanted to include it for today was. On that virtual session that we had in the middle of the summer, it was well attended and we asked people live with a live poll, have people heard about that? And nobody had. So I think a big part of our role in our work with Who's Shoes is trying to match a crying out need for something with something that very often actually exists but people don't know about. So here's Rachel standing outside Sussex County Hospital and the photos go on and show one of the translations of the cards. So here it is in English, obviously, and then to be able to translate it into many, many different languages, I think within weeks, um, Card Medic was actually being used in about 50 countries. Quite extraordinary, and as I say, such a simple, simply brilliant idea. So another person that we linked up with really strongly to 
help us um, prepare and develop and deliver this session was Benash Nazmin, who's an extraordinary midwife up in Bolton. She's got the um, job role of specialist cultural liaison midwife, which I just think is such a brilliant idea. And I hope that other organisations um, replicate that. But also in in her, her own capacity, if you like, not, not directly part of her job, um, Benash has de developed this extraordinary community of cultures that I'm sure that many of you um, have come across and I know that Ben Ash is, is speaking today but talking and working with people like Ben Ash and other friends from ethnic minority communities we were able to crowdsource real scenarios and poems trying to capture the things that really matter to people and to do, to use them in a way to develop constructive conversations but talking about the real issues um, from different perspectives. Now, again, um, this was another scenario, so we would have gone back to the board game, and this came up as, as another scenario. Um, this time, red scenarios are traditionally kind of formal power, and um, obviously NHS England was saying that risk assessments needed to be done for um, different groups of, of staff who were more um, disproportionately affected by the pandemic. And again, to try and match it with, well, what resources are actually available? If I was a manager being told to do a risk assessment, I might be quite scared if, if I didn't know, well, okay, you know, this risk is identified, but what can I actually practically do about it? And to find out that NHS England, um, Zainab, one of our, our friends who was helping us, told us about fantastic resources available from NHS England that were actually able to help people, well, if, if this particular um, circumstance arose or, or that particular um, problem, if you like, or issue, or um, what, what can actually be done about that? What can the answers to those conversations be that would help to keep people safe? And we were able to share the link. And if you go to that link, you'll find there's an extraordinary depth of, of different resources that are available. And I mean, again, you know, use them to start a conversation. If they're not right, then what is needed? So this was the um, graphic record that Anna produced live during our session. So to be able to do that virtually and basically talk it through with people as we went to reflect back to them and say, look, this is what I've heard. Have I missed anything? Have I got anything anything wrong as part of a live virtual session was I thought extraordinary and these have become um, from our six sessions we've got six of these different images capturing the conversations but also Carrie Lewis did this learning synthesis after each event reflecting back on the whole conversation what people had actually said live during the session but also what was said in the chat and also reflecting in a kind of more metaphorical way in terms of what the key messages and the learning have been. So as I say, all of these are available. And if you look at the new possibilities website, you'll find them. So some of these in really iconic images making people think we're all weathering the same storm, but in different boats. How does that play out for people? What can we do about it? So pledges have always been a really important part of Who's Shoes. And the aim is really that during an event, we inspire people to think differently and to come up with what we call lemon light bulbs around a particular topic and what they personally can do about it. So we try and tap into people's individual passions, help them find out what they are really driven by and what particular improvement they want to make. And then hopefully through either the energy in the room and somebody else saying, well, I want to help you with that, or through social media to link them to other people who are already working in that, you know, often quite specific area. And that's how friendships and communities are built and some of the extraordinary outcomes from our projects have been delivered. So we wondered what to do with pledges online and for this particular session around black and ethnic minority um, communities, we were aware through talking to our friends about the concept of microaggressions and we could have chosen to focus on microaggressions but what was suggested was in terms of our positive focus to try and 
f flip it round really into what we call micro first step support. So we got people saying what they would, as I say, individually do. And as part of the session, they could either add live to the grid, but sometimes that was, was tricky. Like you see um, words come through huge and you, you know, you can't quite say what you want to say or to write in the chat. And we were then able to transfer what had been put into the chat into these grids and share them around with people. And they were practical things that people were saying they wanted to do. So when I'm feeling uncomfortable about raising the issue of racism, I will commit to starting the conversation, but admit that I'm feeling vulnerable. And to me, that was a great pledge because I think that's how, how I'd feel, how I do feel, rather than just saying, you know, I pledge that every example of everything that comes my way, I'll be the person standing up and speaking out because not everybody can do that. And to admit that you feel vulnerable and to kind of start the conversation in a different place, I think can be very positive indeed in terms of how everybody feels and good people wanting to make a difference. What can they actually do? What can we do that will help and to understand more? So our sessions went on. Um, I say we, we had a series of six sessions. The fifth one was a maternity special. Um, that was a, a different story. We deliberately went bigger and um, we were trying to test out things like breakout rooms and just how a Zoom session could work with a bigger group, but not particularly the focus for today. Again, I think, I mean, relevant to today and to every time, and I'm delighted to see that there's a wind down zone at the end of the day. Throughout our sessions, we try and build in self-care, a bit of fun, humanity, and we were able to share the wonderful Over the Rainbow Choir that was put together by the NHS England Midwifery Ambassadors and also to end the session with a relaxation session put together by Sarah Jane Pedler in Cornwall who had produced various video resources to help their women and families. So I'm, I'm sort of skipping through a lot of big stuff here but I'm trying to give you a flavour of the sort of things we've been doing. And there was the um, learning synthesis from the MATEX event. Now, obviously, a big part of it for us was testing out whether we could and how we could bring Who's Shoes online. So fast forward now to a couple of weeks ago, we did an all day session with the Shrewsbury and Telford maternity team. Very intense, but incredibly energising and... This was the, the learning synthesis produced after the Shrewsbury workshop. Poems, I've mentioned, a um, really big part of what, they, what we do. Sometimes they really seem to resonate with people and reach people in a different way. And I've got a very special poem to share with you now. So this, I'm sure you recognise um, this picture. Professor Jacqueline Dunkley-Bent, who's been a big supporter of our work, and we were delighted when she agreed to introduce the Shrewsbury event by joining virtually. And as you'd expect, she gave a really inspirational introduction to the event that got people in the right place and talking about continuity of carer. But then Jackie surprised us by reading a poem that she'd written herself, which was just so powerful. And I'd like to share with you now. A woman's cry for her midwife. I conceived and grew my baby, a new life, a reflection of me. But birth, the birth by me, how can that be? When I see myself, I am not free. Surely even I, I can give birth to my baby too. This is one thing even I can do. Yet the waves of doubt, will they pull me under? Oh, I do wonder. And then the midwife, my midwife, nurtures me. I start to share and feel believed. Each visit, and not to mention each precious call, bit by bit I feel reborn. My fear released, anxiety beneath, hidden memories I reveal. The waves of doubt won't pull me under. Oh, but I do wonder. My baby grows. Not so long to go, his head, I think, is nice and low, but the waves of doubt, will they pull me under? Oh, 
how I still do wonder. And then my midwife, just in time, our plans for birth now combined. My fear released, my strength renewed, my path is straight, no more reviews. The waves of doubt won't pull me under and no, 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 I now don't wonder. My next appointment, diary in hand, so keen to share my heartfelt plans. Empowered, believed, and no real fright, my birthing plans, at last, no fight. And then the doubt comes creeping in, as my midwife no longer is. My disappointment I can't hide, and the waves of doubt firmly reside. Without my midwife by my side, the waves of doubt now occupy my every thought, both day and night, my hopes for birth now far away. How can I lose one and gain another? My trust I gave to that significant other. I shared my story one to another and now alone I can't recover. The waves of doubt have pulled me under and I no longer wander. Where do I start? How do I begin? My story now remains within you new midwife, friendly enough. You can never know my stuff. I want my midwife and not you. I can't say this, if only you knew. I see a midwife and then another. I see a doctor and then another. I close down. I won't recover. They can't see. I am bothered. I don't connect. I cannot see. The waves of doubt, they have altered me. The labour happened, the birth took place. I remained in that dark place. They never saw, they never knew. The waves of doubt, my trauma grew. A birth not mine, pain untold. Where's my midwife? Do you know? The one I had, no alliance grew. Who that was, I never knew. Did you? Today I think what could have been had my midwife remained with me. But now I keep my hidden pain deep inside. It still remains. Yes, my story is untold. The enemy depression takes strong hold. Thank you. So this was our final virtual event, Building the Future. We wrote a report about it. We had this little graphic just shows the range of people that we got joining our sessions. Inclusion for me goes, it, it's everybody. It's all age groups, it's all nationalities, it's people with learning disabilities or with different physical or long-term conditions, trying to bring in people who perhaps wouldn't normally have a voice and find a way to, to reach out to them. And this was the report that we wrote about our virtual series and a really lovely tweet from Ben Ash that I hope she doesn't mind me quoting here. Thank you for taking the time to reach out and develop such a vital workshop, highlighting a subject that often makes people awkward and uncomfortable discussing. We need to overcome this awkwardness and discomfort to truly be able to address these concerns and inequities. So our report is now published on the FAB Change Day website and you've got the reference there at the bottom. We've also, as a result of this work, linked up really strongly with the patient safety learning people. They've got a hub where they collect stories that are relevant to patient safety. And as a result of this work, have just opened a new thread, which is around continuity of carer. So if people have got maternity stories that you want to share, and specifically around continuity of care, but I'm sure they'd be interested in, in, in all sorts of other stories as well that affect people's, women and families' safety, then please get in touch with them. So we ended up doing a virtual session with them as part of World Patient Safety Day. And really the key message was that staff safety and patient safety were two sides of the same coin. And the usual Themes were coming through in terms of language, terminology, culture change, reaching out to different communities. I think that session's available online too. 
So as part of all of this work, we've developed some bespoke Who Shoes resources, just as we have done around so many different topics, but specific to black and Asian and other ethnic minority communities. A combination really of existing cards and scenarios, because obviously the, the topic isn't new. The scenario on the top there, push now, sweetie, one of the midwives kept calling me darling and sweetie. I know mm. I have an unusual name, but it's really upsetting if people can't be bothered to learn it. That goes back to 2014 as part of our original maternity resources, but lots of new topics coming along as well. And quite extraordinary, really. I think it gave everybody such a boost. Only last week, Watford Football Club, they had an actual live In The Room Who's Shoes event, obviously... Um, socially distanced and with all the necessary precautions in in place and Professor Jackie Dunkley Bent came and joined the event and as I say I think it gave people an amazing boost and, and this was a lovely tweet that she wrote afterwards a privilege to join you in person this morning contribute to this celebration during Black History Month and talk about improving maternity outcomes for mums and babies enjoy the Who's Shoes continuity of carer that focuses on black Asian minority and disadvantaged women. So there's Jackie in the Elton John suite with Elton John behind her, which I just think is the most gorgeous, iconic photo. And um, Antonio, one of the lovelies, a consultant midwife at West Hearts, tweeting about that. It was such an honour having you present, Jackie. So I'm absolutely thrilled that Jackie has tweeted here. I sent her a set of our new resources and... Thank you, Jill, for this Who Shoes special, responsive as always to exploring the experiences and maternity care of black, Asian, minority, ethnic women and babies. Looking forward to sharing feedback. So Jackie can take as long as she likes, but it'd be really great to, to just hear how those resources resonate with her. They're just a first draft. If other people have got ideas too about scenarios or indeed poems that you'd like to include, then get in touch as we do with, with all of our work. So here's Anna, she was live at the event, recording a really powerful graphic record of the conversations and West Hearts Hospital tweeting as well. So Keely, who's another one of the, she's the um, professional midwifery advocate, putting together a wordler they call from the event. I loved traditional Mm -hmm. dress. I hope you noticed the, the wonderful outfits that people were wearing. Black History Month. Windrush, but pledges in particular for me are, are probably the thing to see that nice and big and to hear about the pledges that people were making on the day were really what the event is about and we won't really know whether it was a very impactful event until a few months time because that's how pledges work that people need time to actually follow them through and make something happen but it's I think the third or fourth event that we've had with West Hearts and they've had some extraordinary outcomes in the past not just from maternity but from from other areas of patient experience as well and it was just brilliant to see them having a bit of fun as well so the little blue shoe there obviously they have one each I hasten to add but just lovely to see people smiling and uh I think we all just need a bit of joy at the moment. So Who Shoes, the main maternity resources that we've developed through the three big projects are now being used in about 70 NHS trusts and indeed internationally. And these documents are available on the internet, a toolkit about how to run a Who Shoes workshop, but this pays sharing what we call these lemon light bulb ideas and We've written three books of of case studies. The case studies are one booklet for each of the three main projects that we've done, but we're hoping also now to pull together some best practice studies around continuity of carer and around postnatal care generally. But obviously it's working through how to make that happen practically because projects need funding as these existing projects have done. Sharing best practice is really what it's all about. I just wanted a quick mention of, I just think this is a wonderful example here. Florence Wilcock, who I mentioned, Kingston Hospital, has teamed up really with one of her colleagues called Grace, 
they're both podcast people and they've realised that Flo has introduced her fantastic The Obs Pod with a weekly episode and Grace has been producing in a slightly different format with interviews and so on, Brown Mama, Brown Me. So a couple of weeks ago they did a joint podcast where they kind of interviewed each other and chatted really really nice and really I think the kind of thing that's going to move these conversations forward an honest conversation about what helps what isn't helpful how an obstetrician might struggle with with various things listen to it I think it, it's it says at the bottom have a listen and to finish on a personal note from me this is lovely Alice Ledour it was oh it's got the date on it actually the 11th of April 2016 I'd already linked up with Alice who was a student just starting her PhD at Bournemouth University and asking if she could use her shoes with men in Uganda to try and improve maternity outcomes in Uganda and she wanted to know more about her shoes so she came along to this workshop at UCL and to cut a long story short I've worked with her, sponsoring her to use Who's Shoes in her project, as you can see, translating some of the cards into Luganda. And I think she's very, very near publishing her findings. She's finished her PhD now, and congratulations to her. And I'm very proud to be part of something so important. So what were your lemon light bulbs today? I hope I've said something that perhaps has resonated with you in in a new way, made you think about some way that you can make a difference or to build on something, I'm sure particularly the people on this call, that you're already doing or perhaps to pass on the word to others. So thank you very much. And um, as I'm Jill at Who's Shoes and I'm very privileged to have, have taken part today. Thank you to Helen and all the Broom Foundation team.